At Kroger, we want our fresh produce to meet your expectations, which is why we're dedicated to doing up to a 27-point inspection on our fruits and veggies, checking for things like scarring. In fact, only the best produce like zesty oranges and crisp carrots reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh, our higher standards mean fresher produce. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Welcome to BreezeLine, where you'll say, ta-ta, T-Mobile, because we've got more reliable home internet that's a whole lot faster. In fact, ten times faster. No, seriously, because we have real internet backed by our fiber-powered network. And T-Mobile, well, they just have a 5G cellular network. So act now to get superior home internet. Find your perfect speed with prices starting at just $19.99 a month for 24 months. Terms and conditions apply. Go to BreezeLine.com to learn more. Welcome to the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea Podcast. I'm Danny Sheriff, your host, certified fertility awareness practitioner, functional nutrition counselor, and founder of the HA Society, and of course, an HA recovery coach who has walked where you currently are walking. This is the place to come if you care about getting your period regularly. This podcast aims to educate, inform, and keep you motivated on your period and HA recovery track. So let's dive in. But last thing, nothing on the show should be taken as medical advice. So please seek the advice of your physician. Hey, do you know what your blind spots are? As in... Do you know what it is, what the thing is that is holding you back from getting your period back? Look, it could be an absolute plethora, cornucopia of things. But in our practice, what we tend, the first place we tend to go is what behaviors and habits do you have around food that you may be still doing? And these are called blind spots because we just don't necessarily always know that they're an unhelpful habit or that it's something that we're doing, whether it be a subconscious or conscious need to control our food or our body, or whether it be something that you've just done for so long that it feels normal and like a preference even. We have created a checklist. It's a three-page checklist that goes through food types, behaviors around food, and mindsets around food. And what you do is you go through the lists and you check off and you see which ones are you doing, whether it be daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and how are they potentially affecting your recovery today? So it's a really simple checklist. It's just three pages. You go through it. There's a very simple scoring system to help you figure out um, how much this may be impacting your recovery. And it's just an insightful thing for you to do to help you reflect and then you can journal about it or you can learn more about it and just start really working at any of the boxes that you checked and understanding that they're playing a role in your recovery so to get the checklist all you have to do is go to the hasociety.com forward slash blind spot and we'll send it straight through to you you can print it off And you can check on it every now and then. I always recommend a reflection point every like four to six weeks. How are you going? Are you still checking that behavior off or have you, you know, systematically kicked it to the curb? So check it out. It's the hasociety.com forward slash blind spot and it will be waiting for you there. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the HA podcast. We have a recovery story today, and I'm excited to bring this story to you guys. I feel like I've known Lena now. How long have I known you for now? I think you've known me for for some time, maybe half half a year. Yeah, yeah, like Like since since, definitely six months minimum. uh, I think since June last year. Mm, Okay, yeah. So it's been, uh, yeah, it's been a while. So I've gotten to learn so much about Lena and and watch her her story and it's not you know it's not like and like every story it has its own up and downs and trials and tribulations so now that she has had a number of recovery cycles um I wanted her to come on the story and kind of come on the show and tell her story so welcome Lena 
I'm so excited. Thanks for having me. It's my first podcast ever. Yes. And it's uh, always been a dream of mine to participate in a podcast. And today is the day. So um, yeah. yeah. You're like, one day I'm, I'm going to be on a podcast. I don't know what for, but I'm going to be on a show somewhere. <laughs> I like that. So would you do us a favor and start by telling us like who you are, where you're from, um, mm-hmm. and where, and then kind of dive into where your where your experience with periods and yeah. missing started of course so my name is Lena I'm uh, 25 years old I'm from Germany I think most uh, Germans um, can hear that <laughs> um, yeah um, I got I got into lifting um, pretty early I think but um, yeah that's <coughs> oh sorry something in my throat. Let's, um, I think, start um, at my pre-teenage and early teenage years. Um, I think that's, <coughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've like um, never heard you cough. Are you, is that, yeah. are you nervous? <laughs> is it like a I, nervous? I'm really nervous sick? and um, <laughs> yeah, I think. All good, well, don't be because every <laughs> single person listening is a friend. They are all like, yes. Tell me what you know, because we need <laughs> yeah. we need the advice. Yeah, true. So let's do it. Let's hope the frog in my throat um, mm-hmm. goes away. <laughs> yeah. So let's start at my early uh, teenage years. I think I've um, I've been a bit o- overweight um, at the age of I think eleven or twelve, but never um, health threatening. You know, so I was um, was never obese or something like that. I just felt like um, I never was one of the beautiful or popular girls. Um, that's the thing that, that's that been always bothering me. It was pretty hard for me to accept because I always thought I'm not good enough. I always thought I, I got to lose weight. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not pretty enough. All, all that stuff. And I um, always felt like I didn't fit in, which was pretty hard too. So... Um, yeah, that's um, when I was 11 or 12 or something. Um, a couple of years later, I think maybe at 14, 15, 16 years, I lost weight naturally without, without um, doing really much. So it just came off. And um, then I had a normal healthy body and I was at a healthy weight. I always loved food. I was I, always, I was a good eater and um Everything um, seemed to be fine from the outside, but um, yeah, that's where it all started because um, at the age of 15 or 16, I joined my first gym. Um, I w- always wanted to lose more weight to be finally skinny and like the all the other girls, whatever that means. <laughs> um, mm. Yeah, I did mostly only cardio and I tried to eat only the calories I burned in my cardio sessions, which is just just crazy (laughs) so I tried to only eat 200 or 300 calories for dinner every day and a lot of the evenings I only had like a protein bar and a little something which clearly wasn't enough because I still was growing and everything and yeah but I tried to eat as little as possible because I you know I wanted to lose weight and I I was like you know um everyone tells you if you want to lose weight you you need to eat you don't need to eat <laughs> you, you gotta stop eating mm. so that's the first thing you learn I think and um mm-hmm. yeah so I so I lost weight and um I received a lot of compliments because I because I looked better and I got more skinny and people were like oh my god you changed and oh you look so good and everything and that encouraged uh, encouraged me even more to lose more weight but um I think um, all the girls and all the women um, who've been in my place or are in my place, they know that it's it's just never enough. You're never happy in your body and um, it always gets worse. It always gets worse. And you're still feeling fat or too big and all the stuff you're telling yourself. And um, I just felt, I still felt like I'm, I'm never going to be good enough. It's just not for me. I'm I need fixing my body isn't good enough and so um, down the route I got scared of food and I I was terrified of gaining weight and I was always chasing like the lowest number possible on the scale 
Um, I think um, problem was that I was never really underweight um, BMI wise. So um, on the outside, everything looked fine, but my brain started to, you know, get more and more sick and nobody was, was seeing that, I think for a long time. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, what happened next? Um, after graduating from school, I think I was 18 or 19 years old. I found another gym and I found strength training for me and I found lifting and um, I really loved it from the start. And it just was such a cool thing for me because I was so good at it. And I just, my body is made for lifting and I've always mm. been, um, yeah, mostly bad <laughs> at most sports. Because yeah, I just, same. Yeah, I'm not tall and I'm not um, skinny. My muscles are pretty, yeah. Um, yeah, you got like those short insertion points yeah. and those the good levers, like leg to torso ratio. Exactly. That's like not ideal for sports other than power sports yeah. and strength <laughs> sports. And totally. Yeah, right, right. So I just felt like, oh, I, I finally found my thing and that's my thing and I can be good at that and I have to get better. And it's just, um, yeah, I'm a really... Um, what's the word for it? I got a strong mind and everything I, I want to achieve, I'm going to achieve. And there is not a, not a single thing in my life I didn't achieve, <laughs> which is pretty good, I think. But um, mm. yeah, I'm such a stubborn person. So um, yeah, I couldn't um, couldn't just do it for fun. I, ha I had to get better um, with it. And so my body changed again and I lost even more fat and gained muscle and I, I looked toned. And um I got even more compliments for being so fit and dedicated and um, yeah, so um, that's how it went for the first couple of years. And um, what's interesting maybe is um, I was on a pill at that time and there, um, there came a time where I didn't even get a withdrawal bleed anymore. So I didn't, didn't even bled on the pill. So I think my HA developed maybe yeah, maybe at the age of 19. Sometimes I think maybe it developed when I um, went to the US after graduating from school and I went there six weeks with my um, um, my then boyfriend. And um, I know my, I knew my, um, um, what do I wanna say? Um, my goal was to not gain any weight in the US. And I was just so terrified because I knew from other people, they, they went from Europe to the US for maybe an au pair year or something. And they, they came home and they, they looked horrible. <laughs> and um, I felt like, oh my God, I'm, that's just not the way it, it's going to be for me. And I even lost weight um, in the US and I tried to eat as little as possible. And I only ate like two times a day. And that's because that was um, what my former boyfriend then was doing and I felt like okay so um I can't eat more often than him that's just not possible I have to eat less mm. than him <laughs> and um yeah I have a question for you really quick mm -hmm. um, when you kind of said you you saw other people come back from their time overseas and you felt that they looked horrible can you put words to that like what do you what what did you see and feel about mm -hmm. those people? Yeah, I I think I saw and I felt everything that society is telling us about um, um yeah, about the fact that yeah, about when when people when they gain weight, it's just nothing that anyone wants to see and it's it's never good and it's always like oh my god she let herself go and she mm. she ate too much and she um she didn't take care of herself and she blew up i don't know yeah She's yeah never heard anything, right? po like... uh, anything positive uh, positive about it yeah is that that such an interesting conditioning right because it's kind of mm. like it, it probably realistically was like a few pounds, you know, yeah. a few kilos. 
Um, and we just see it and our, like a part of our brain just lights up and it's really just like, okay, well, what do you, you know, when I ask, well, what do you believe in that? Or like, what are you seeing? It's like, that's a really good question. I, I'm just seeing what I've been told is mm. that. But after all of, you know, how all of this work you've done pretty much for the past year in total that, you know, you've been sort of trying to figure out this problem and where it all comes from and stems from. How do you look back at that and like think back to those people that you saw and those fears that you had? Mm-hmm. What do you feel now? I feel kind of sad for myself because I feel like I I should have been enjoying everything more. I should have been enjoying my time in the US and uh, I shouldn't have worried so much. Mm. Yeah, because I I look back at pictures, you know those um, selfie f- photos you take, um, um, checking your stomach or your legs and everything. And I looked at my face and I was just, it was just dead, <laughs> that kind of dead inside, dead eyes and dead everything. And um, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I. I... I bring it up just because it made me think like how much sometimes a few pounds just like chilling out about a few pounds or a few kilos just like lets you live such a fuller life and that 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 transaction if you will is um totally worth it but we feel so much pain around it okay well I'm sorry to interrupt you you may I, I thank you for pausing there with me so where were we that you can't you had come home yeah I I came home from the U.S. um and shortly after I um um I got together with my now boyfriend we're still together luckily <laughs> and um we met in the gym I think a, a year earlier in the summer or something and um yeah we we trained a lot together and um he he's been training a lot and I think at that time I've been in the gym five or six times a week and I counted and weighed every bit of food and yeah I think I was always in the in the caloric deficit and I was still um getting stronger stronger at my lifts and Mm -hmm. everything so um um it wasn't optimal I think but um yeah um, it's, it's a confusing time right you're like look I'm making progress yeah this must be good yeah mm-hmm. yeah and I even started working in the fitness industry and um, yeah that wasn't good too <laughs> because I think that it's um it's a really toxic industry and um, it puts a lot of pressure on you on you and um, my, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself because I always thought I gotta look um a certain way and i gotta gotta eat a certain way i gotta lift a certain way i gotta train a certain way and um i felt like people were always looking at me and always um yeah i was getting a lot of compliments but i i wouldn't have been comfortable gaining weight in that environment just wasn't Mm. possible Mm. because i felt so raw and i felt so um yeah don't know powerless <laughs> that's fair mm. that's fair yeah. what was the point where you realized that this wasn't really working um I think deep down inside I I knew it pretty fast I think I, I mm. even knew it um, when I was in the U.S. and um I just ignored it mm because I was so stuck in my eating disorder and I was so stuck in my exercise addiction and everything. And I know that my mom realized it and um, she couldn't, couldn't do anything about it because she she couldn't get through to me. And today she she always tells me, you were, you were like a cactus and one, one couldn't reach you because you were so, yeah, what is it called? a cactus yeah (laughs) 
What? <laughs> yeah, with, with, with sharp edges. She always said, God, oh, you're had, prickly. <laughs> yeah. She said I had all those sharp edges and she couldn't, mm, she couldn't reach me and there okay, was nothing yeah, yeah. soft. There was that nothing soft. So me, nothing that feminine, masculine everything. side of yeah, you. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. It was totally masculine in that, in that time, masculine energy. And um, yeah, I think I realized it, but I just pushed it away because I was like, you know, um, gotta do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. I am so, so stubborn. And um, at that time, I decided to do a bodybuilding competition. Um, yeah. Yeah, to, to I, go deeper in the wrong direction, basically. Right. And, mm-hmm. and I knew it was wrong. I, I knew that, but I just was like, you know, um, I gotta do it. I gotta do my, mm. <laughs> yeah. I gotta fail myself and um, yeah, just uh, see see what happens. I gotta make my own um, experiences. It's just the way I am. I gotta, gotta check everything out. And um, yeah, I even did half a year of an off season and I gained a few kilos and it was, it was so hard because I knew, um, I knew I was gaining weight and I knew it was, um, um, I knew I needed to because, um, you know, you can't, you can't go on a competition diet if there's nothing to diet, <laughs> if there isn't any, any fat or any, um, anything you can, can go lower on. And, um, so yeah, I, um, I gained a few, a few, um, kilos, but I, at that time I never got my period, not even on that time. So, um, still wasn't enough. And I was eating about, um, to name numbers, 2,500 kilo, um, calories or sometimes even closer to um, 3,000 and it still wasn't enough. Mm. Yeah. Why do you think that? I think because I, I was so active. I trained so mm. much and I was always like running around and I couldn't sit still. I was like, just like the, um, yeah, textbook anorexic that um mm. can't sit down i was always running and and fidgeting and um couldn't couldn't sit still yeah and what's what's funny is that i as a child i always was um i loved reading and i i still love it and i'm reading a lot um today again luckily <laughs> but um at that time i couldn't even focus i could never yeah. focus on anything I feel that it's so hard. Yeah. It's it's like uh we don't actually realize how it's changing our brain chemistry. Mm-hmm. Like the behavior and the like the lack of estrogen, the increase in anxiety, the inability to focus, the you know, and then like it's perpetuated by feeling like it's helping us, you know. Um, okay, but yeah. fidgeting, some people will fidget because they like that it keeps them moving, keeps them burning calories. So it's all just perpetuated. Um, which can be really scary because you're like, okay, now, now that that's how it becomes really hard to get out of that loop. And yeah. it's like, that's how we dig ourselves deeper. So I'm really curious about like how you got out of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think it, it always gets worse before it gets better. So mm-hmm. um, for me, that was the case. Um, I did my competition and I did really great at it. And then there was a time where I really loved it and looking back I don't know um, if I really loved it but um, yeah I think it it was necessary that I did that Mm -hmm. and I I don't regret anything and um, it was it was a time that was necessary for me and um, sometimes I look back at those pictures and I'm, I'm really proud of myself because I I know what I did was great and I did good. And I placed um, third one in my class. Um, I was in the uh, figure class for the people who know anything about bodybuilding. But um, yeah, my eating disorder and my exercise addiction uh, addiction was at an all time high. And um, I had almost zero social contacts and I only lived in that bubble and um, I, I couldn't function. I was just surviving. And um, after the uh, competition, I still know that I um, even lost more weight. And uh, four weeks after my competition, I've um, lost another kilo or something, which is pretty dangerous because it's, you just, you yeah. need to do the opposite. You need to, to get healthy again because you're 
clearly the unhealthiest you can ever be after after a competition and i um i know that my my joints were hurting and um um i always had to go pee because my estrogen was so low and um, one day i told my mom oh my god my joints are hurting and my my knees are hurting and she was like yeah that's um that's what you get when you're in, in menopause and that was a was a sentence for me where i thought oh my god i just gotta I, i'm sick i gotta get healthy again i gotta do something and um yeah but it was just so hard because I was in that in that loop, and I, I think I, I got up in the morning and I walked for half an hour. I went to work. Um, I didn't have breakfast. I had breakfast um, after working a couple of hours, and then lunch break. I was walking again, and after work I was um, training. I was um, yeah working out, and um, after working out I was. I would go go out again on a walk and it was just like crazy. I was just running yeah. all day, running all day, but ne never getting anywhere and just running away from my thoughts, mm. from my from my life, from my feelings, from everything, because I feel like the only thing I felt like I could control was my was my body and was um the way I ate. Yeah, wow. That is quite a moment, right? Like, mm. oh, this is, you know, I, my body is shutting down or like telling me it, it's not happy and I'm doing, I'm still walking and, and dieting and working out like while I sit with this information. But at some point, because I think by the time I met you, you had already decreased exercise quite a lot. Yeah. Um. So what were your first, so, so what made you say, okay, I'm going to mm -hmm. make some changes? Yeah, um, I think it was in spring of 2020 um, when um, the COVID pandemic started. I, you know, we, we couldn't go to the gym for a bit of a time. And um, so I naturally started uh, training less. And I think I went from five days to um, four days a week, which is still um, pretty intense. <laughs> I know that now, but um, I just um, couldn't do a bigger step. and. Um, I think in March 2020, I found the book, No Period, Now What? Mm. And I knew I had to change something. And um, I knew that before because I I made myself that promise before I um, went on this competition prep that I, um, yeah, I would take care of my hormonal health um, after the competition. That was my, my promise for myself. But um, it was just something I, I kept, um, yeah. Mm. What do you say? I just uh, put it put it on the corner Del for a delayed. moment. Delayed it, yeah. But um, yeah, and then I found the book and I I read it in about one or two days and I soaked everything in like a like a yeah sponge or something and um, mm -hmm. yeah I made slight changes and um, at some some day I stopped counting calories yeah at some point and it that was really hard because. Um, um I counted calories for so many years I just knew yeah was that, <laughs> you I you probably kept like mentally counting yeah. them mm -hmm. that uh -huh, I think I did, I did that, that a long, long time, time. Mm -hmm. yeah I think I stopped counting calories in July or something of 2020 and I I calculated them in my head for another year mm -hmm. That's realistic. Yeah, I yeah. actually love mm -hmm. this point. This hasn't come up on the show much, but this is really realistic. Um, people who have counted for a long time, it's so common to find yourself like just sitting there, adding up your lunch and breakfast, seeing where you're at kind of thing yeah. in your head um, and doing it all the time and like mm -hmm. getting into bed at night and like recapping in your head what you ate. Yeah. And like waking up in the morning and kind of thinking about like what you ate yesterday and like what you should, it's like such a strange phenomenon, but it happens and it goes for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And that could, that can be a difficult thing to get out of. Um, are you, do you find yourself still doing that or were you able to, to stop doing that? Um, I think at some point that just stopped. And yeah. today I'm, I think I'm, I'm just doing, I don't do it anymore. No. Yeah. You just kind of get over it. Like it's yeah. actually really hard to do. The skill does, like the skill, you know, of like of calculating your macros. Mm -hmm. It, it, 
it does go away. But also I think the the main thing is that um it stops serving a purpose. You're like, yeah. okay, I'm calculating it, but I'm not, I'm no longer doing anything with that information. Yeah. I don't need that. I know, you know, what you because yeah. you I bet it's like kind of connected to when you have new new goals, like, hey, we're building your meals like this. You're gonna focus on that. You're gonna like now counting calories doesn't go with those new goals mm-hmm. that you're working yeah. on. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I just I don't want to know. <laughs> it's yeah. the same with yeah. my weight. I don't I don't want to step on the scale. I don't want to know because um I know at this point of my life, um I'm not able to do um anything about it because I know my health com- comes first and I um mm. I'm still healing and everything and um what what does this information bring me? Mm. Nothing but um struggle and pain and sadness all more confusing and yeah. loud and mm-hmm. just it doesn't change anything so why would i know uh, why would i get to know something that um doesn't change anything for me so yeah 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 well there's like this is more relevant to the rest of your story but we'll wait till we get there um okay so you started making those changes um you had gained you had eaten eaten a fair you had increased your calories thing to like 3000 some days. Um, you were still active. But then you decreased down to like from five days to four days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't really working, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't really working. Um, that's right. Because um, I feel like I was half assing recovery for like, yeah, maybe a, a, a good year, mm. maybe more. Um because I I still got uh, stronger in the gym and I was doing like um, 130 kilograms Mm. of uh, hip thrusts, which is a lot. (laughs) Yeah. And um, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm fine. My back hurts a bit, but I'm fine. Mm. And my my boyfriend always was like, you know, um, 130 kilograms of hip thrusts. That's just not your usual, that's just not the usual weight um, a girl lifts or a woman your your age lifts. And um, all the other women are doing so it's not um literally it's still on some yeah. kind of a competition <laughs> level <laughs> yeah you're still maxing out like you're still yeah. lifting a really heavy percentage yeah mm-hmm. yeah so I knew um I feel like um food never was my problem because I I just love to eat and I went through so many tubs of ice cream and um yeah, that was that was the good part of recovery because I I had those days where I really felt like I I can't let go. But it's it was hard too. But um, the hardest thing was really giving up um, lifting because I, you know, you at some day you identify uh, through your physique and um, you are your your body and um, people know you as the fit person and they know you as the bodybuilding girl and everything and. Um, you know yourself as that and you just you can't let go from that identity because um you're afraid um of what what's beyond that is is there something beyond that is there anything am i still a person is there still um something inside me um it's just like you don't know because you suppress it for so long and you've only been this um this body for so many years yeah, that's hard, I think, to recognize, and um, that's mm-hmm. um, yeah, the reason why it was so hard to to give up lifting, and I was so afraid of my body changing, and um, yeah, so one day I was just like, so let's let's give it up, and I I had taken a, a longer break for I think eight weeks or something, and after those eight weeks, I think it was um, at the end of two thousand twenty. I was experiencing a bit of spotting and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, it's working. It was the, the first um, um, progress sign I think I saw. But um, after those eight weeks, I was like, you know, um, I'm, f- I'm fine with lifting. I got to start again because mm-hmm. I, I was so afraid of my body changing. And um, yeah, but it just didn't work. And I, I saw all those, I witnessed all those women getting their periods back and I, I don't know how many times I've read, oh, I got my period after five weeks. And I was like, oh my God, I'm mm. doing this for one and a half years. And um, 
I just I want to want to bring that up for every woman who's still in this process. Are you all about DIY and your recovery? Then you'll want to visit our HE Society resource store. We have created a bunch of amazing tools, guides, templates specifically to help you navigate recovery, find your own blind spots and track your progress along the way. So you can browse through our store and you will find endless avenues to help you with your unique challenges from our 100% free mental hunger mindset mastery workshop to our seven day recovery kickoff challenge. We also have in-depth, budget-friendly, do-at-your-own-pace courses like our Restore program. It's an incredible 10-module recovery guide that comes with access to the HA Society for a full year. The Fertility Awareness for HAs courses, teaching how to use the FAM method to track progress through recovery. The Period Recovery Game Planner, which helps you figure out your blind spots, what is and isn't so many recovery what are you not doing that you could be doing to help you move forward and even journal pages and journal prompts that are designed specifically to help you with body image and mindset throughout recovery and not only can you access these killer recovery tools from our store but you can also head there to join the ha society community which is open and by far the most valuable thing you can do for your recovery is to find a support community like this the HA Society gives you access to live community calls multiple times a week, mini courses, and a full private podcast playlist for you to catch the replay of every single community call and get all of the HA podcast episodes early. So visit our resource store today. Take advantage of all of the tools to help you fast track your DIY recovery journey. I guarantee there's something in there specifically fitting for you that will help you on your way so you can go to the hasociety.com forward slash store and now on with the show um this uh, this thing took me two and a half years and it was the hardest thing i i've ever done i've never done anything harder in my life it's and i'm not lying <laughs> it's um yeah well was a really hard thing for me and um yeah um I think I I gave up lifting in the middle of 2021 um for good and I was like okay let's get my period back first I don't know how long it will take but um I will wait it out and um yeah I went um through fall and through winter and through spring and still nothing happened I had um yeah, your usual signs of um, cervical mucus and everything. And um, I gained a bit more weight, but um, I think the important thing is that I still was in my comfort zone. Yeah. And never, yeah, never said, there were still some things you were doing that yeah. kept you comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was still walking a lot and I was still, I did yoga and I went bouldering and I, um, I didn't eat any full fat products. I still ate uh, light, light fat cheese and everything. And um, mm. I didn't cook with oil. And I think my, my fat intake was pretty low and I was still eating very clean. I think that was a big part. And um, yeah, I couldn't really eat snacks. Mm. So I think I usually had one snack, but not more. And that was kind of a hard thing for me mentally and, um, like you just uncomfortable with snacking yeah. yeah yeah I was just uncomfortable um with eating when I wasn't hungry yeah. I just couldn't I just couldn't understand that I had to eat when I wasn't hungry and I um and th that took me so long to understand yeah. that that for for many women they have to eat when they're not hungry to get their periods back and to be on um on an optimal level hormonally i yeah. think and um yeah so in may 2020 i went on a two week long hike um alone through um, portugal and through spain and alone um, like by yourself yeah by myself with my i did not know that yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. okay wow all right yeah. <laughs> that was cool but i met a lot of people so i was never alone but um yeah right was a cool cool um adventure and um yeah i think um 
the last day when I, um, before I got back to Germany, before I went on my flight back home, I was like, oh my God, um, there's something I gotta, I gotta, um, hmm. I gotta take with me. There's, there's, there's something, an experience or some wisdom. There's some wisdom I gotta take with me. And what, what's that wisdom for me on, um, on that um, two, two week long hike? And what's the thing I'm gonna learn about myself? Mm -hmm. I always um, felt like asking myself that question. And then there, there was something that came up. And the thing was, um, I decided to get myself help from a coach to finally get my period back because um, I I thought about my whole process and I thought about um, yeah my goal to get my period back and I thought about um, it already taking one and a half years and um, I mentioned earlier I um, yeah I reached every goal in my life and there hasn't been a single thing I didn't I didn't achieve that I had one or two and um, but I came to a re came to the realization that I um, that I can't do this alone. I gotta need help. I gotta get help, and um, I I won't do this alone because I'm I'm standing in my own way. <laughs> were you able to see what those things were that were standing in your way, and you're just like, I don't think I'm willing to change those, or were you a little bit unsure what it was that was stopping your approach from working completely no I think I'm a I can can reflect pretty good on my behaviors and I'm a I'm I'm a person that um, usually is pretty clear about their habits and their intentions and then about everything that's going on in their head so I I really knew what my problems were but um when I started working with you, I think I, I even told you um, there's something I need from you and I need you to tell me what to do. And I, I'm i functioning best with rules and with um, plans and with habits and routines. And I need you to um, to create that for me. Sure. So that I can only just tick boxes because, um, yeah, that's what I'm good at. I can take boxes and I can, I can do goals and, um, you know, but, but I, like, but it's hard for you to set those for yourself in this particular issue. Yeah. But yeah. Because I can't trust myself. I always mm. felt like, you know, I can't trust myself because if I'm, um, I'm going to eat, um, the way I'm hungry, I gotta be, I will be obese one day. I can't trust myself around food, around my body, around my hunger, around everything. I just can't trust myself, and I think that's a some um, deep rooted, a deep uh, rooted belief. Um, something like I'm not good enough, and um, yeah, I'm I'm not safe. Something like that, and mm. I I just I can't trust. I can't let go because I gotta control everything. Mm. Yeah, yeah historically handling all of our issues with the masculine like checklist style yeah um solution I guess it's pretty wise to be able to know that about yourself and be like okay so also you know if I if I try to create the list myself I will negotiate on it or I will worry that it's not the right list like I'm not confident in this um, yeah exactly Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so let's go into sort of what we changed from there so quick recap right um because so many people can relate to this mm -hmm. we got ha and we tried all of the ways we're comfortable with um that are sort of low-hanging fruit or easiest to recover and we're making yeah. some progress but at some point we're stagnant and we're self-reflecting and we're like, okay, this is probably not something I can figure out being accountable only to myself. So we start together. And what do you recall um, being sort of the things that you changed straight off the bat 
and what was hard and what was easy? Um, I think one of the first, uh, two of the first things we changed um, was um, that I gave up coffee and I um, switched to um, yeah, decaffeinated uh, coffee, which was pretty easy. So I, I hadn't uh, had any problems with that. But um, at the time we started uh, working together, I um, had a lot of free time and I wasn't working at that time. And, and it was summer and I mm. could sleep the way I want. I could, um, you know, um, plan my day the way I wanted. So that wasn't hard. Um, what was really hard is that I had to throw out every, um, you know, light fat product I still had. I still had my light uh, feta cheese. I still had my, um, yeah, light light curd and everything. And um, yeah, I started cooking with oil, which was uh, uh, pretty scary for me <laughs> because mm. I I hadn't done that. I never yeah. never done that. <laughs> yeah, and I added added butter and I. And I started eating eggs again, whole eggs. And that's um, still one of, one of uh, the things I love most because I, you know, usually I have about two eggs a day and I just love it. I feel like it's really what my body is craving and just a, a really good food for me. And I haven't had that in so long. And um, yeah, I always ate um, low fat ground beef and we switched that to, um, yeah whole fat or normal fat ground beef and um i think we yeah pretty fast added a consistent um snack between uh, lunch and dinner which wasn't uh, really hard because i always felt like i needed that snack i was hungry for it and it was um, confirmed for you so you were ready yeah. to do it yeah 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 and it felt good. And um, I always had my um, dessert after dinner and I still have that. And um, yeah, I was pretty fine with the first changes we made. And I um, I recognized um, improvements pretty quickly and my digestion got better and um, mm. my moods got um, more stable. And I even my hunger ramped up and I felt more hungry than before, which was scary um, at first, but I knew it was a good sign. Because I um, I read a lot about um, the biology behind everything and behind hormones, so I, I knew I was on track and it was good. And um, yeah, I gained I gained a bit of weight. And first it was okay, but um, yeah, it went on. And um, there mm -hmm. have been a lot of times where I was like, oh my god, I'm huge now. <laughs> I'm I felt like a like a whale or like a baby elephant or something and I some days I I couldn't even rec recognize myself and um the hardest thing was um seeing my belly um expand and um yeah having all that fat on my belly that um was so unfamiliar because I always have been so lean and even if, when I was lean I still hated my stomach because I thought there was too much fat on it which is so Looking back, it's just crazy, crazy thinking. It's just, mm. I had a crazy mind. And yeah, that was hard because um, I think it took me June, July, August, three months of working with you until my first um, period came. Yeah. It felt like longer than that. It That's took good. forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it felt like forever, didn't it? Um, was it really only three months? I guess, yeah. oh, did, I guess did like we... saying three months doesn't sound that long, but being yeah. in the three months yeah, feels right. like but, a very long time. But I think we, we started working together in June. Sure. Oh, start, of, start of June. So June, I July, believe August. you because I feel like yeah. we've been spending more time on optimizing your cycle versus trying to get it back. So that yeah. probably yeah. makes sense. It's just like, oh, wow. You kind of look back and you're like, oh, that that I remember that bit I remember that being hard being like when mm -hmm. you know when and where is the progress and I I there's a couple things about what, what you're saying that I want to sort of touch on and acknowledge the first one being that you know at, right out the gate those are some massive changes you had to like one of the things you were still doing was like eating like a bodybuilder and eating, yeah. you know, like low fat and, and trying to avoid. So, so yeah. you might've been eating more of those foods, 
but it was still those foods. And I think yeah. it's so um interesting and surprising to people that like sometimes it's not just about eating more, it's about what it what it was, because your mm. body is still experiencing a level of restriction. It's yeah. still just like eating more of the things that are harder to digest. And it's it feels like we're in a famine and this is all that is available when really mm. there's actually abundance and it's very often um you know we have to bring fats into people's diet yeah. and it makes right. a huge difference mm-hmm. yeah and i think i think the hardest part was when um when we felt like um just a couple of weeks before my period came back at the end of august we felt like um it's still not enough and there's still mm. something that's um you know yes, lacking yes. and that's missing and um that was when when ashley told me you know um I'm seeing you're having three solid meals and you're having one snack and you're, you're having dessert. But um, what about a snack between breakfast and lunch? Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh my God, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She found, oh, she's so good at that. Yeah. She like finds, the... <laughs> <laughs> she's definitely better at that than me. I'm learning so much from her on that. Um, I, yes, I remember that. I came yeah. back from vacation and you mm-hmm. added a snack in. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, boom. Yeah. And I hated it. I really hated it. And I was like, no, I, I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm not hungry for it. I hate it. And I, <laughs> I wouldn't have it. But um, yeah, I started to have a banana and some almond butter or something between um, breakfast and lunch. And um, yeah, it's, some days I felt like, like, you know, a newborn or something because I felt like I was eating every two hours. <laughs> um, That's eating funny. Six six times a day but now it's just um I'm still doing that um yeah it, just, yeah, yeah. it, it feels naturally and um I know I'm eating a lot more than than other people but um I'm a lot more healthier than I've been um the last couple of years so yeah but I think after I um added the snack between breakfast and lunch um five or six days later I ovulated for the first time and I got my period I think 10 days later, nine days later or something. So um, it's, yeah. it's, it what? shocks people how like there really can be something. There really can be like one like seemingly annoying and stupid little thing um, that is sort of, yeah, in, in the way or, or not necessarily in the way, but like, but could get you across the line that you're trying mm-hmm. to go. And sometimes it really is investigating that and finding the thing that makes you crawl out of your skin um, to do because that might be the thing that you have to do so that's really cool and I yes there was also a lot of you know for you with your history coming up out of an eating disorder coming up out of um, bodybuilding prep and a long history of sort of eating in a certain way and continuing to do movement you weren't doing an excess of movement but you were uh, doing bouldering and things like that mm-hmm. very you know a couple times a week yeah. and with it, you probably had also um, a significant amount of muscle mass, maybe compared to the average female. So all of that has to be taken into account when it comes to like how much food it takes for your body to function and manage all of the systems of your body and, you know, stop your body from eating its <laughs> eating itself and its own yeah. muscle. And um, so it really makes a lot of sense that that happened, but let's give everyone a little bit of reality too, right? That it's not just like, oh, add a snack, get your period back. I mean, yeah, but the cycles weren't all perfect, right? So what mm-hmm. what happened next? Yeah, um, what happened next? I think my first um, recovery period was ovulatory and um, I was pretty happy about it. And um, I picked up lifting um, straight after I got my first period. and. Um, I mentioned earlier, I'm not a person of regrets. I don't regret anything. But um, if you are currently in the place of getting your first period back, don't go straight back to lifting. Don't do it. I think um, it would have done me better if I had waited another couple of weeks because um, my body was still getting getting used to cycling. And um, yeah, I... I just went back to lifting and I I just can't do it leisurely. I um I started slow and I um really tried to to keep it 
slow more slow and to keep a more slower approach but um yeah i'm just not that kind of person that um can do do half Patient. half a workout <laughs> or, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's just hard for me because I'm um I've always been in that um bodybuilding mindset and um you know um mindset of um screaming at yourself during sets and um pushing mm -hmm. another one another one another one and um crawling out of the gym after um training legs and um yeah not even able to yeah. walk and everything but um yeah so it's it's a pretty pretty intense shift to try to get to a more um yeah, yeah more feminine approach more feminine more more um beneficial yeah. approach for my body and for my hormones but um yeah I think I so it took me a bit time to find my balance um mm -hmm. in training and um so yeah my um cycles that followed my first um recovery period they have been and ovulatory um every every second every one. other one every second one <laughs> and i haven't been able to break that pattern until um last cycle yeah two in a row Three. two ovulations in two a row, in a yeah. row and um i have i had been um no i i got six periods since since then i think it yeah just mm -hmm. um just had my my sixth one so um yeah half an hour of work and um it's uh, still not optimal and i think my my progesterone is still a bit low because i'm uh, noticing that the temperatures in my luteal phase um they could be a bit higher and even in follicular phase they could be a bit higher but um yeah i'm still trying to figure out if it's just my body um because i can see a rise when i'm ovulating but um yeah, I don't know if I can um, maybe optimize something, but time will tell. So um, yeah, yeah, it's still it's still pretty pretty important for me to keep up my eating and to to not lose any weight because I know um, it just won't be beneficial. I'm just not in a place where I can do that, and that's hard. It's some yeah. some days hard because I I feel like um, I know what I'm capable of, and I know that I if I wanted to, I could lose, I don't know, 10 kilos or something and look um, lean again and look like that. Um, yeah. Like a bodybuilding woman again, maybe not in, in half, half a year, but maybe in a year. And I know I, I did it, I did it once and I know that I could do it um, again, but um, there's, there's another there's word in my head. Yeah. There's, that there's a cost that there's, yeah, a cost there's, that. There, there's a cost and there's another voice in my head that's um asking me you know um do you think that's that's necessary and do you think that's um beneficial for your life for your social life for your um you know um for your family life for your for your relationships for everything for your health and for for your well-being and um if i'm honest with myself the answer is no. I just yeah, don't yeah. don't need to do it. This is this is awesome. This is where we acknowledge that um yeah, just because you could doesn't mean maybe that you should. And yeah. yeah, there's that voice that's gonna say, hey, re like remember how good it was, like remember the praise and the acceptance and the love. Mm -hmm. Like we could do that, we could go back to that. Um, uh, but you did that back in a time where you know, you at least chose to have your blinders on to like, we've all, we all did this. I did this too, to like that, that it's not just, um, it's not without consequences, right? Like we just, yeah. we just think it's just good. And now, you know, too much. And the reality is having seen how sensitive your cycle is, you know, um, most people don't just go straight into perfect cycles and, you know, you follow that pattern too, right? Like there's still work to be done and there's still signs that the, that the body is like um, kind of tiptoeing out of hiding mm. and it will just go right back. Like it, it does take for most people, it's a year to build a level of yeah. stability and strength against um, you. Know, when you put your body through adversity, when you put your body through challenges, it, your body needs to have a level of strength to be able to 
maintain that homeostasis yeah and resilience yeah that resilience yes. and you still need to build that and so if you ran back in the other direction you know that would it wouldn't be there mm-hmm. so and and also like it's just it's just clear too that there's still just some like emotional work then to be done at, with the mourning for you it's definitely mourning and grieving the 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 hard work that you had done the the potential to go back to it you know like um want, wanting to go back and do it again and desiring that and not being able to is a time to mourn and grieve yeah and that's okay yeah you're, like you're in process like right as we speak as I speak to you right now you're in process and I just know that if mm-hmm. we had you back on the show in another year <laughs> I think you would even be you know you would have different experiences and different yeah. perspectives to share and I think it's it's still a time to reflect on um yeah on the time where where I was lean and where I was um quote-unquote um desirable and um where I had that you know um yeah fitness optic um body and everything but um looking back I I did not feel more loved at that time Mm -hmm. and um I did not feel confident and I did not feel I did not didn't I didn't I never loved my body and um I think um objectively my body um doesn't look as good as before but um I'm just so only happy objectively for, if you yeah. have a certain dis- definition of what looking good means because I think yeah. that you would say my body looks healthier objectively. yeah def- definitely and I'm but does it fit the bodybuilding mold does it fit like society's like leaner is better mold no it doesn't mm. Mm. yeah but it's definitely healthy and I wouldn't want to change it um anymore and I I just love her for everything what she does for me and um I love her resilience and I I know how how sick I was and how I looked and how yeah just how sick my mind was and now um I know what what is re- reversible and there's our bodies are incredibly um resilient and there's so much of this re- reversible and um I think you you just have to be um thankful for that opportunity and there there has been a time in my life where I was so anxious that I um, would never be able to um, start a family and never be able to have a child mm. to to get pregnant and everything. And it's there was a thing that I just I felt like I couldn't accept that. And um, now that I have this um, opportunity again, it's just it's wonderful, and I'm I'm um, celebrating every every period I get and every every day I, I bleed so or every period I get is just a it's like Christmas and and birthday together <laughs> I love it I love that because it's oh. just been such such hard work it has been yeah yeah like you put in the hours for mm-hmm. sure for yeah. sure and I feel like your your journey is kind of continuing and you're mm-hmm. going to go down a path of like okay now how do I balance my desire to still be an athlete and still train but but remain healthy. And I'm so excited to see how that looks for you. So you'll always yeah. have to keep me in the loop. I um, will. And we are not done yet. We are still working together. <laughs> we, yes, we are not done, but, but it's a life, it's a lifetime of work. Yeah. So, you know, I always love it when people reach out, like I get, I'll get a, a a photo of someone's baby from like a year ago and I'll be like oh my god I remember when we were when oh, I was talking you off a cliff yeah. thinking that you would never get pregnant and now you're sending me a picture of your baby like the whole thing is just the best so yeah all of the updates forever um Lena thank that. you for sh- for sharing your story with everybody we appreciate it completely um final final word if there's something that you want someone listening to know yeah or everyone listening to know what, what would yeah. it be I think I um gotta gotta say something to all my women and girls who are um yeah naturally sitting at a higher body weight and um I always um feel like um I needed to know that and that was um some part of the reason why I started working with you because um, 
you are more like my body it's type me, yeah. and I feel like there are a lot of practitioners out there um eating disorder practitioners and um HA practitioners that are just I feel like they are so small and um some sometimes I think they they don't look recovered because they are still so small and um I'm just um sitting on a on a higher weight genetically and um I just I always had um yeah bigger legs and they've they've never been thin and I always wanted to have long thin legs and it's just not for me and it took me such a long time to accept that but um now that, I, that I've accepted that it, it's it's so much easier and so I think every woman which is genetically sitting on a higher weight um, needs to know that that's uh, totally fine and you can be you can be at a normal weight at a normal BMI and every doctor tells you no don't uh, gain any more weight everything's fine and they they told that to me and they said you know you're fine you're you are sitting on a on a good weight and I, I was terrified of gaining any more weight because um, everyone told me no you're okay with that weight you don't need to need to gain more but um, for me that weight was still still not enough and then and I had to gain a lot of weight to um, get my cycle back and to get my my hormones uh, thriving again and um, I think it's just highly individual and um, now that I'm that I got my period back I'm heavier than ever and I don't know how heavy I am but um, I think for a little reference I'm 156 um, centimeters for all the 165 156 or 165? No, one, 156 yeah okay. I'm pretty cool, cool. pretty short I'm 156 um meters centimeters and um I'm sure I am heavier than 64 pounds I don't know if it's sorry kilos <laughs> kilos <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sure you are too <laughs> yes yes yeah so Dang. I think I think I I'm sitting at 65 kilogra kilograms, maybe, and that's nice, I healthy, think it's, that's normal the weight. Heaviest yeah. I've ever been, and I am 20 kilograms heavier than I've been um, at my lowest. But um, yeah, that's just the way it mm. is. And um, all the women that um, that are listening and that um, feel like um, they're on a normal weight and they don't have their period back, I just can can tell you. Um, maybe for your body it's not enough and you, your body knows best and yeah. you gotta feed oh, feed yeah. her and um take care for her and um she will tell you when when it's enough weight and no bmi will tell her and uh, tell you and no doctor and no don't know no practitioner no internet website yeah you need oh, to yeah, listen I to love your it. <laughs> yeah well thank you so much lena we can't cannot wait to get back with show in a year and mm -hmm. we will mm -hmm. see all of you guys next week bye Bye. Thank you so much for listening today, guys. Please subscribe to the podcast. And if you could head to iTunes specifically and leave a rating or review, that would help so much because it makes it easier for other people with HA who are Googling around to find the podcast really easily. So if you do that, you're doing a service to all of the women. Welcome to Breezeline, where you'll say, ta-ta, T-Mobile. Our home internet is just plain better, more reliable and faster because we put internet first. If there's network congestion, we won't slow your internet down like T-Mobile does to help their cell customers. And right now, you can try out a true internet experience with Breezeline's reliable and fast fiber-powered home internet. Find your perfect speed with prices starting at $19.99 a month for 24 months. Terms and conditions apply. Go to Breezeline.com to learn more. So, how does it feel when you play Roll Up to Win with Tim Hortons? Buy a hot or cold beverage using the Tim's app and find out. Roll in the app for a chance to win prizes ranging from free coffee and donuts to a Universal Orlando resort vacation or a sweet car. Oh, don't forget the TV. And this year, every roll is a shot at a $1,000 daily giveaway drawing for two $500 prizes. Roll up to win and get treated by Tim's. No purchase necessary. Account registration required. 50 US and DC. 18 plus entered by 4223. See rules at rolluptowin.com for free entry of full details. Void in Florida and where prohibited.